Hi everyone, welcome to the Lawcast. My name is Melanie Thorley and I'm a solicitor here at MJT Law. Now, today we are looking at the film Legally Blonde. Now, this is quite an old film. It's got Reese Witherspoon in it and uh, we're going to have some fun with this. Okay, so this scene is when Elle is arriving at her first class at Harvard and she's just going to settle right in. A legal education means you will learn to speak in a new language. That's true. You will be taught to achieve insight into the world around you. And to much. sharply question what you know. The seat you have picked will be yours for the next nine months of your life. And those of you in the front row, beware. The law is reason free from passion. Does anyone know who spoke those immortal words? Actually, the, the words were, the law is free from passion, man, when perfected, is the best of animals, but when separated from law and justice, he is the worst of all. But we only really hear the first few lines of that. Yeah. Okay. Aristotle. Are you sure? Yes. <laughs> Would you be willing to stake your life on it? I think so. What about his life? Uh oh. I don't know. Well, I recommend knowing before speaking. The law leaves much room for interpretation but very little for self-doubt. It's very true. For those of you who, um, who don't know, there's a lot about law that we don't know. Um, if, you are a, uh, if you are a theorist, a law theorist, they will say that the law sits in the circle, which is the law. Everything inside the circle is, is solid law. We, we know what we know. Like, we know that it is against the law to blow through traffic lights. We know it is against the law to murder someone. But what lawyers deal with is this part here, but we also deal with this big circle outside of law. And that space is called the penundra of doubt. Now, the closer you get to the edge, the more tricky it is to identify exactly what is going to be considered the law and what isn't. Uh, I work quite a lot in this space. Um, employment law tends to move around a lot, so we, we end up in this area where it's not quite settled. Uh, but there is some time that we um, spend in this nice little secure area of, yes, we know that that's the law. And this is what uh, that teacher's talking about here, that the law is, there's, there's a lot of interpretation. And when we think about interpretation, it's not about uh, truth and lies. It's about whether you sit in that circle or you sit in that penundra area. And the further you go out, the harder it is to predict. And the, um, and the more arguments one can make um, from on either side. So Al is about to learn all about this at law school. And you were right. It was Aristotle. It was Aristotle. Now, I assume all of you have read pages 1 through 48 and are now well-versed in subject matter jurisdiction. Who can tell us about Gordon versus Steele? Let's call on someone from the heart, sir. <laughs> so the teacher is looking at Al because Al looks a little bit different from everyone else. She's dressed in uh, bright colours. She doesn't have a laptop. And she uh, clearly hasn't read the material yet. Al Woods. Oh. Um, actually, um, I wasn't aware that we had an assignment. Uh-oh. <laughs> Vivian Kelly. 
Kensington. Do you think it's acceptable that Ms. Woods is not prepared? No. I don't. Would you support my decision to ask her to leave class and to return only when she is prepared? Absolutely. <laughs> okay, so Hal's basically been kicked out. This is unsurprising. Uh, law school is an evil, evil place. <laughs> and you, uh, yeah, if you're not ready, you're going to get kicked out. I remember multiple times uh, the doors with which I went to university, um, they could lock on one side so you could get out, but you couldn't get in. And uh, they were quite often closed and locked in that way. So if you were late to class, you weren't getting in. If you weren't prepared, uh, yeah, you were kicked out. I remember one tutorial I went to, uh, there was a there was a lecturer, there was a tutorial um, lecturer there who turned up on his like on the second day, second tutorial, asked everyone to do the work, and uh, half the class hadn't, and so he just shut down the tutorial, kicked us all out, and went home, and that was that. Look, it's uh, harsh. But true. Well, I think uh, I think they go on and say something slightly. So Al is now leaving. It's embarrassing, but it's happening. Everyone in the room's got laptops, their books out, and she did now, not. Now, Miss Kensington, did diversity jurisdiction exist in this case? No, it did not. Okay, diversity jurisdiction is an American thing. It is. This is diversity jurisdiction gives the federal courts the powers to hear matters that are not in the federal space or not, not federal in nature. Uh, to be able to have dur diversity jurisdiction, the applicant and respondent need to be in separate uh, states um, in America and the amount that the applicant is uh, attempting to get needs to be more than 75,000 US dollars. Look, we actually have something kind of similar here. It's not a it's not here in Queensland, it's not about jurisdiction that, that jumps from federal from state to federal, which I assume that that's what this is trying to do. Uh, it's about what state the matter is going to be heard in. Uh, so we do have some law around that, uh, jurisdictional, um, what, what jurisdiction the matter is going to be heard in, and uh, there can be jurisdictional objections on that point. But we don't have diversity jurisdiction not in the, in the same true sense okay everyone thank you for watching the law cast for another day that was legally blonde we've got a um we've got a four-part series on legally blonde that was part one and uh, i hope you keep watching and listening for the next parts over the next few weeks uh, my name's melanie thorley and you're listening and watching the law cast see you later